Hello everyone, my name is Fan Junbu, and I am a PhD student supervised by Professor Wendy Zhu at Cornell Tech. I am presenting our work for the battle, extending driving simulation from the lab to the road. This work is a collaboration with my colleagues Stacy Lee, David Goldkey, Mark Cowley, Kanandra Sharma, and Professor Wendy Zhu. In this project, we designed an on-road driving simulation infrastructure called Portobello that allows drivers or passengers wearing mixed reality headsets to see virtual objects staged within the real-world context. The goal of Portobello is to allow researchers to run the same user studies both in-lab and on-road. Because in-lab and on-road driving simulation environments offer different strengths in terms of control and realism, it can be desirable to run the same study in both settings when possible. A research approach we refer to as the twinning of studies. There are many existing on-road driving simulation platforms that allow participants to see virtual objects overlaid on top of the real-world view, such as the ones listed above. Although all these systems track the vehicle's dynamics to accurately position virtual objects related to the participant, they do not natively support high-precision interaction staging based on the surroundings outside the vehicle. For example, the picture on the slide below shows how the zoom system enables participants to drive through virtual traffic cones. However, these traffic cones are spawned in the vehicle's reference frame. As a result, the traffic cones' positions relative to the real world cannot be controlled. Most autonomous driving studies require objects and events to be staged at fixed locations in the environment. For example, Driver-to-driver -driver communications mostly happen at intersections, and pedestrian vehicle interactions usually occur at crosswalks. With the current systems, researchers are unable to stage virtual objects precisely on top of the existing road infrastructures that exist in the real world. To ground on-road driving simulations in the real world, we introduce Portobello as an infrastructure that can be deployed underneath the existing on-road driving simulators to provide a shared world coordinates for both the vehicle and the virtual objects. Specifically, we have applied sensing and localization techniques for robotics and autonomous vehicle research, where LiDAR and IMU are used to localize the vehicle in a predefined world frame. As a result, instead of staging virtual objects in the vehicle-centered reference frame, designers can stage virtual events within a fixed world frame. The execution pipeline works as follows. During the study design phase, the researchers drive around to scan the test area, which produces a point cloud map of the test route. The origin of the point cloud map is set at the starting point of the drive. Then the researchers can place objects and events for test scenarios, such as traffic lights and crosswalks, in the point cloud map based on the surrounding contexts. At runtime, the vehicle is localized within the same point cloud map, and virtual events are triggered based on the vehicle's location in the map. Here is an example showcasing what our system enables us to do. In the lower right corner is the real-time localization algorithm that locates the vehicle in the point cloud map. We staged a pedestrian crossing scenario at a crosswalk. When the vehicle approaches the crosswalk, the event is successfully triggered at the correct location. With the help of Portobello, we can run the same study design both in-lab and on-road an ability we define in our paper as platform portability. In this project, we emphasized on how to twin studies, that is, to run the same study across different environments. We are particularly interested in how different platforms influence study results, and specifically what the portobello system enables researchers to discover about factors that influence outcomes in less controlled environments. To investigate this question, we implemented Welch AL's crosswalk carpeting study in both our in-lab and on-road environments. In this study, participants are asked to help an autonomous driving system to predict whether virtual pedestrians staged at the side of the road are likely to cross. When the vehicle automatically stops at a crosswalk, the participants are asked whether the virtual pedestrians want to cross the street. They are tasked to instruct the vehicle to proceed when appropriate. If the participant thinks it is safe to proceed, they'll press the proceed button on a phone-based app to inform the car to move forward. Otherwise, the car will wait for the virtual pedestrian to cross before moving. We used the crosswalk corporation study to enable us to compare how the study environment influences the study outcomes. 
For this comparison, we recruited 32 participants who experienced the crosswalk correlation study scenarios both in the in-lab and on-road simulation studies. We counterbalanced the experiment conditions. Half of the participants experienced the in-lab simulation first, and the other half experienced the on-road simulation first. Our study takes place on Roosevelt Island, which is a small island between Manhattan and Queens with low traffic. The location of the crosswalks is shown in the red boxes. Here is a demo footage that shows our study both in lab and on road. When participants read their experience in each simulator on a five point Likert scale, there is generally not a strong preference for either. The only exception is on the comfort scale. Here, people rate against the on-road condition because of the discomfort caused by the weight of the headset. In terms of behavioral results, almost half of the participants performed the task on both platforms perfectly. In a total of 128 events, there are only six virtual collisions. One rogue participant made the same mistake on both platforms. This is why we run studies in simulation before we try them in the real world. We do not expect this means that participants would run over real people in subsequent tests with real cars. But this does point out that participants are aware that they are not exposed to real danger in driving simulators. Overall, 14 participants made different decisions on different platforms due to differences in interaction timing. We want to point out that it is not surprising or bad that the in-lab and on-road study conditions may differ. But it is important for researchers to understand better what ways we should expect results to change as study conditions change. The most important finding we had, which is probably obvious in hindsight, is that people found the on-road study condition to be more stressful. They perceived the in-lab simulation to be a visual approximation, but the on-road simulation to be a functional approximation. And so people felt the decisions carried more weight in the on-road condition. It is also interesting that the source of such anxiety in the on-road conditions are things like weather and other road users, the visual noise in real-life driving. However, these visual noises are exactly the factors that people usually remove in in-lab studies because they do not have direct relationships with the task at hand. Driving simulation platforms are intended to be proxy environments that enable researchers to conduct studies where real-world experiments are dangerous or impossible. The standard for such platforms is face validity, which is whether participants take a simulation seriously. If the participants behave in earnest, researchers can have greater faith that their behaviors in simulation are like the behaviors they would display in the real world. One of the things I have learned from this project is that it is more important the simulation environment allows participants to behave and respond naturally than it is for the simulation itself to replicate reality in fine detail. Of course, platform portability faces many challenges. Most importantly, it is hard to control randomness in the wild, and synchronizing event timing across platforms is almost impossible. In conclusion, we suggest that researchers working in driving simulation research consider using twinning of studies to increase the ecological validity of their study findings, or to understand if other factors might influence results. They should first run studies within a controlled in-lab environment to collect statistical measures and form hypotheses. Then they should report their studies to a less controlled on-road simulator to test their hypotheses in a more complex, realistic environment. We believe that by going beyond running clean studies and allowing some noise to bleed through, researchers will find more informative results that are more applicable to real-world settings. Thanks for listening to my talk. I would also like to thank my amazing collaborators, specifically Dr. Hiroshi Yasuda, who could not be added as an author due to Kai policies. We greatly appreciate the sponsorship from Toyota Research Institute and Vovenba Toyota, who helped make this research possible.